Hey guys, episode 103, we're talking about how even superstars get booed. How do they deal with it? Let's go talk about it. Come on. Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to the 88 show. This is the, um, what is this? This is, gosh, this is the, oh, it's the internet. Um, okay, cool. Take two. Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to the 88 show. This is the internet's only dental show where we talk about what matters most in marketing, bringing the marketing heat this morning. Uh, I am your host, Joshua Scott. This is episode 103. 103 episodes in uh, this month, February, man, introducing the new topic. Uh, title of the article for this month is called Superstars Get Booed. Uh, and it's really a whole concept about dealing with public criticism, dealing with negative reviews. And so we're gonna talk about that on this episode. Uh, next episode coming up, I've got a sp special guest and friend, uh, Shane Simmons, fellow podcaster and dental marketer. He's gonna be here live in the studio, do a little Q&A with him but let me tell you where this article came from um right at the start of the new year i think it was actually january 2nd i sat down uh, with my son to watch a basketball game and it was the toronto raptors at the san antonio spurs what was significant about this game is it was Kawhi leonard's first time returning to san antonio as a toronto raptor and so if you don't know basketball that's fine but let me just kind of give you the, the backstory on this Kawhi was like the San Antonio superstar, right? I mean, Coach Popovich has David Robinson and wins championships, and then has Tim Duncan and wins championships, and Kawhi Leonard was like the next in line, the heir apparent to the championship team. Um, and everybody thought that was the case. He got hurt last season with a quad injury and never came back from it. And the more the season went on, the more he began to express his unhappiness on the team, his desire to be traded. And so in the off season, the Spurs traded him. Uh, and everybody in the city was a shock because this was like the next like golden child coming up. Um, and so it traded him to the Toronto Raptors, comes back to San Antonio for the first time. Six, seven, forward from San Diego State, number two, Kawhi Leonard. Six, nine, forward from New Mexico State, number 43, Pascal Siakam. And the, it was funny because like the commentators before the game, they knew he was going to get booed. I knew he was going to get booed. You know, we've been through that with LeBron James in Cleveland before. So that's how things go. But so, you know, Kawhi comes on the court during warmups, gets booed, uh, gets announced in the starting lineup, gets booed, uh, comes out on the floor, touches the ball for the first time, gets booed, comes up to a free throw, you know, line, shoots some free throws, gets booed. At four minutes left in the game, when they finally pulled him out, Every time he's touching the ball, he's still getting booed, like the entire game. And I don't know that I've ever seen an athlete get booed that long. Um, and at even one point, the crowd is chanting traitor, like just over and over again, like multiple times throughout the game. It's just like this traitor, traitor. And so the commentators were even laughing about it at halftime and kind of going like, wow, yeah, this was uh, more than what we thought. And so this is a story about an athlete and a sports team, uh, but I think it's also a story about me. Uh, it's a story about you. It's a story about our life's work and how we deal with public criticism and negative reviews. And so I wanna take a moment, let's go through kind of four observations about dealing with criticism publicly. All right guys, so look, observation number one is super simple. Everybody gets booed. Everybody gets booed. I mean, it's just a fact of life. Uh, even Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, go on Amazon and look that up. 420 one-star reviews. 420 like scathing one-star reviews. It's probably the best-selling book of our entire generation. Uh, and you know, I would imagine that if, if you had 420 negative reviews, I mean, at best you're discouraged, uh, probably in long-term counseling because of it. But the fact is, Everybody gets booed. There are always two audiences. There are your raving fans and there are your public critics. And that's just a fact. So number one, everybody gets booed. Number two, and again, this is gonna seem so obvious, but I think it's a great point to sit on, is that the boos are right. The boos are right. So what was interesting was the commentators of that game at halftime were talking about this with Kawhi Leonard, and they're basically like, the fans are right. 
the fans have a right to boo an athlete. They have a right to an opinion. And so I think that that's totally true. You know, there are these two audiences. One of them is going, you're raving fans. They're going to connect passionately with what you're doing. And then there are those that won't. The thing is, they're both right. Uh, the fans were right to boo. Kawhi Leonard was right to leave and pursue what he thought was best for his career. They're both right. You get a scathing review online. You're building a great practice. They're both right. So number one, everybody gets booed. Number two, the boos are right. Number three, the boos are meaningless. Okay, so follow, follow this progression with me. Everybody gets booed. The boos are right. The boos are also meaningless. And so here's what I mean by that. Look, you know, the fans have a right to boo. They did. But for Kawhi to take that and make a decision about his career based on the fans' criticism or based on the fear of the fans' criticism, then maybe he's compromising core values about his life and his career and the vision and journey that he feels like he needs to be on. And so it's meaningless. At the end of the day, people are going to boo, but it can't detract from the vision. Uh, we recently had a client that was very critical of some of our work, um, which doesn't happen often. And so I began to get involved, four phone calls into it. This client has zero problem expressing his criticism over the project. And so there's definitely some disconnection and some expectations there that were probably off on both ends. And, and sure, there's some things we can learn. But at the end of the day, you know what? The boos are meaningless. It is. As a team, we're going to talk about it. We're going to make some corrections. We will not change the course of our business, the values, the vision because of one client that is criticizing us. And so you're going to have negative reviews. You know, maybe you haven't gotten that first negative one, that first one star. Maybe you have. You know that feeling when it first comes in. And it's like, oh, but at the end of the day, it's a move on, pursue the vision. We're building a great practice. And at the end of the day, those boos are meaningless. All right, guys, last point, number four, the more meaningful your work, the more frequent the booze. So the more meaningful your work, the more frequent, you know, basically superstars get booed more. The more you're out in the public, the more you're engaged in social media, the more frequent, the more often those booze, those criticism, uh, that criticism will come. Uh, one other interesting fact about this Kawhi Leonard story is when he got traded, the Spurs actually traded another player, Danny Green as well, to the Toronto Raptors, okay? So Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green both get traded. They both come back to play in San Antonio for the first time. We all know Kawhi gets booed. What do you think they did to Danny Green? I mean, applause. So they're applauding him every time he touches the ball, probably just to create some contrast, like we hate Kawhi, we love Danny Green, but why are they applauding him and booing Kawhi Leonard? Because Kawhi Leonard was the superstar. I mean, Danny Green's an amazing player. In, in all contexts, he is a superstar to even be playing in the NBA, but the weight of that franchise was not on his shoulders. Uh, that was Kawhi Leonard's uh, role. He was the center of that franchise. And so he's the superstar. And so when you're in that situation, man, the criticism is stronger. It's more frequent. Uh, it's more pointed. Uh, it's tougher to deal with. It comes more often. And so that's why the boos happen. We see this with LeBron James. When he left Cleveland, he was booed. Uh, his, his jerseys were burned. When he left Cleveland the second time to go to LA, people in LA put up a big billboard that said, we don't need a king. And here we are talking about the best player in basketball history. Uh, and so the more meaningful your work, the more you're going to get booed. Just look at it like a sign that you're doing something impactful. Guys, that about wraps this up, but you know what? Closing thoughts, look, uh, Kawhi Leonard is gonna be fine. Uh, the San Antonio, the city of San Antonio is gonna be fine. I mean, at the end of the day, that's just the truth of it, right? Uh, and at the end of the day, you're going to be fine. What I would encourage you with is don't let the criticism, don't let the bad reviews uh, change your course. Critics and, and, and criticism and reviews and critics are all short-sighted. Don't get caught up in that. Your work is legacy. Your work is vision. It's what you're called to do. And so stay the course. When I say the booze are meaningless, man, put it out of your vision, focus and go. I hope that helps. Um, link to the article down below. You'll see that. Would love to know your thoughts on it. Next episode, Shane Simmons is going to be here. Looking forward to that. A little Q&A. Best place to find me online is at Instagram, at Joshua Scott. Leave me your comments, some interaction. I'd love to hear from you. 
I think that's it, man. You got anything else? Feel good. Episode 103. That's a wrap. See you guys.